Hi, Hana family. Welcome back to another episode. Growing up, my great granny had a knocking spirit. So I grew up with, you know, her telling me stories about her knocking spirit and mom and mom's cousins telling me stories about them communicating with great granny's knocking spirit. And I've, I've always sort of been fascinated by, and on very few occasions throughout my own life, I've experienced knocking spirits, but not to the extent that great granny had a knocking spirit. Each of the stories that I'm going to tell you tonight involve a knocking spirit or a spirit that makes sounds through knocking and making noise banging of some sort. I hope you enjoy the show. If you've had your own experience with a knocking spirit, feel free to leave me a comment in the messages or shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. When my mom was a teenager, she lived in a really small town. In order to get to one of her friend's houses, she had dropped through this old country road that actually went through the creek bed. One afternoon, on her way to her friend's house, they had to wait in a long lot of cars for about 20 minutes to get through the creek bed. Apparently, they were clearing away after an accident had occurred. By the time they got to the scene of the accident, it had been cleared away. On her way home that night, just as she was reaching the creek bed crossing, she heard a loud rapping at her back window. It shocked her because it wasn't a rattle or any other normal car noise, but rather literally sounded like someone pounding on the car window with their fist. She put her hand back to make sure that her window was rolled up and wasn't rattling or knocking. It was tightly closed. There were no trees low enough to touch her car. Just as she passed, actually, into the creek bed, there was a repeated huge pounding on the back window again. In her own words, she put the pedal to the metal and got the heck out of there. That next day, she learned that a girl in her high school class had been in that accident they had came upon earlier that day and had actually been decapitated. Mom still believes to this day that the tapping she heard on her window that night was the ghost of her high school friend. My own mental picture is still vivid, as though I had just lived it. The last faint beams of November sun shone through my bedroom window, illuminating the dust in the air and giving it the image of lightly falling snow. The prisms on my window refracted the dim rays and turned them into bright kaleidoscope ornaments of color splashed upon my walls. Usually, in the pristine hour of twilight, the house was full of the aroma of my mother's cooking and stories of the day's events. But that night, I was the only one home. The golden hour of twilight had slipped away into the void of darkness, replacing the beauty of the prisms with a sliver of distorted moonbeams through the twisted bare branches outside my bedroom window. Sleep was beginning to drug the air, and I was rhythmically drifting in and out of slumber. The sound of my father's footsteps resounding hollowly through the stairwell woke me up. I heard him light on the top of the stairs and awaited the familiar creak of the stairwell door, but the door remained closed, and the gentle, constant tapping began. I assumed the door must be locked, and this was my dad's attempt to wake me, so I stood and unlocked the door. Up to the instant I unlocked the door, the rapping continued, gradually rising in the intensity, until I could see the reverberations shaking the oil-stained wood. Just a second I yelled over the violent knocking, finally unlocked the door, and it flew open to reveal a rush of cold air and the emptiness of the dark stairwell. Terrified, I shouted for my dad, but was answered by the harsh silence. No one was there. My family had some land in Texas, near the little town of Normandy. My grandfather was born there, and he and I would often go there and spend a night or two. There were many good times to be had there. I learned to shoot guns, went hunting, and we had lots of cookouts. I'd heard a few ghost stories concerning the house we stayed in, and I must admit, they scared the tar out of me. However, the only paranormal activity I ever witnessed ended up just being my overactive imagination. Until one day, years and years ago, my mother, grandfather, and I went up to Normandy to spend the night. We enjoyed this lovely day, and my grandfather had told my mother and I about the old days, when he was a boy. Eventually, we were all too exhausted to go on. It must have been around 10 or 11 when we finally went to bed. That is when this strange occurrence occurred. All the lights were off, and it was pitch black inside the house. It was pitch black outside also. I couldn't see my hand right in front of my face. 
Over the years, I had developed a method for going to sleep. I would lay down in one position and not move until I went to sleep. The pure darkness had always motivated my imagination to bring forth my fears. And I had, somewhere along the line, decided that pretending to be asleep was a lot better than letting the ghost know that I was awake. I was in the room which connects to the kitchen in the south wall, the living room in the north wall, and to a spooky scary room in the east wall. As far back as I can remember, I had regarded the room on the east of mine the most terrifying room. Even during daylight hours, it held some eerie qualities that I could not even attempt to explain. My bed was right against the east wall. This is not where I would have chosen for the bed to be, but there was nowhere else for it to go. This odd room connected in its north end to another bedroom where my mother was sleeping, although she was not asleep yet. My grandfather was staying in the living room, which was north of the room I was in and west of the room my mother was in. Anyway, this is what happened. I heard a knock of a heavy human hand on the wall I was laying next to. It came from the other side of the wall, and probably from another space and time, too. The hand knocked three times, cutting the silence like it was made of jello. I was rather petrified staying much more still than before and trying very hard to disappear. I immediately ruled out the idea of it being anything other than ghosts because one, no one was in that room. And two, it sounded like a very human hand. Not a rat, not a creature in front of the wall. It had the exact same sound as if you took your own hand and hit it against a table. It's hard to duplicate such a sound with anything other than a hand. Also. I didn't hear any additional sounds like a mouse running through the wall or whatnot. It came all of a sudden, and after knocking, made no sound. The next morning, my mother confirmed that she heard the same thing. She said it freaked her out as well. She was sure as hellfire that it was a ghost. My grandfather, on the other hand, said it was probably an old mouse that lived in the wall. I disagree. 